Hello viewers and welcome to the final episode of Trash Talk on Lancer, Long Rim Edition. In today's episode, Lich. Lich, unlike all other Horus matches, actually has an entirely fictional origin in earlier fantasy works, which definitely leans more onto the theory that Horus matches aren't named after mythology, they are named after goddamn dungeon and dragon creatures. Lich, in Old English, means corpse, which is fitting as liches are often powerful necromancer that reanimated themselves in search for eternal life, or eternal unlife. Now reborn as a lich, not only does lich have power over the undead, how could you kill something that is already dead? Named after such abomination, lich, cannot be killed, for it has already died a thousand times, and it will die for another thousand times. Looking at its stat, lich has an absolute crappy health, with no armor, but it does have a high evasion and excellent e-defense. It's fast on its feet while being standard sized, has an absurdly low heat cap along with an oddly decent repair cap. It also has a great sensor range, along with a good tech attack bonus and save target. As for its traits, it has two of them. First, Soul Vessel. At the start of your turn, the Lich marks its current location, replacing any previous marker, if there's any. For once per round, as a reaction to being hit by an attack, failing a check or save, or taking damage or heat from any source, including yourself, the Lich can immediately become immune to all damage, heat, or conditions from said effect, and teleporting back to the marker, as it reverses back in time. The Lich can also take this reaction at the end of any turn, including its own, but doing so will only teleport it back to the marker. Also, it cannot do this reaction when being jammed, stunned, grappled, or unable to take reactions by any other means. Basically, don't get suplexed. Second, Immortal. For once per scene, when Lich is destroyed, in the round after its demise, as a reaction to the end of any turn, it can immediately teleport back to the Soul Vessel marker. It will heal to full health, clear all heat, and reduce to one structure and stress no matter what. Doesn't matter if it's completely annihilated, a Lich can take this reaction no matter what. And if you died along with its destruction, you came back to life too. However, if Lich chose not to take the reaction in that round, it remains destroyed and you remain a corpse. Normally, I would say something like beware of the Lich when piloting it, and end the line with a creepy tone. But this piece of shit is so inconsistent, you should threaten to suplex it even on death if it doesn't bring you back to life. What the hell can it do to you if you die anyway, not bring you back to life? Anyway, with these traits, a Lich basically cannot die no matter what unless it's being a massive turd, or you bit off more than you can chew. Onto its weapon mount, it has one, a main slash auxiliary along with an amazing 8 base system points. As for its core power, Lich can activate Chrono Stutter for glitch time, which is basically, well. What's wrong? Look, I'm pretty sure people are expecting goddamn JoJo reference because what else it could be, but I'm just thinking, there must be more than JoJo memes out there. But you haven't used JoJo memes for months already. Fuck it. Upon activation with a quick action, for the rest of the scene, Lich can literally stop time. So, what can it do with this absurdly powerful ability? Well, for once per round, when any attack, effect, or action is made by one character successfully against another character inside Lich's sensor range, Lich can go through and move into the targeted character's space, or as close as possible, counting as teleporting. While pushing the targeted character up to three spaces away in a direction of Lich's choice, even when it's immune to involuntary movement, before the triggering action resolves. This is in no way a reaction, simply because there's nothing to react to, and it doesn't work against effects that target self. After that, Lich becomes the new target of that attack, effect, or action. All damage, conditions, or effects of said action now affect Lich instead, and the action must be performed as it was done on the original target. Basically, what would have happened to the original target, now happened to Lich. The original target is about to get run over by truck, Lich takes their place. The original target is getting patched up, Lich takes their place. The original target is about to watch cats, Lich can do nothing to self-inflicted pain. Obviously, if Lich takes damage, deduct the damage based on Lich's armor, resistance, and etc. if any. In short, with glitch time, Lich can be a surprising lifesaver to others when applied right, with equal opportunity to commit maximum shenanigans against its enemies. 
as for the rest of its license, you get Tier Firmament and Unraveler in the first section. Tier Firmament. Where does it, where does it, where does it? You gain a full tech action of the same name. Upon activation, choose a Blast 2 zone within your line of sight. Within the zone, all characters besides you cannot take reaction, and any character besides you that starts their turn within must also pass a system save or take 2 heat and become slowed until the end of their next turn. The zone persists until the action is taken again or until the end of the scene. With this, you can slow people down, and prevent them from ever reacting. On top of that, this tech system isn't dependent on sensor range, so, go nuts. Unraveler. Dark, wet, very deep, as the dead. High damage, long range, and reliable too. However, you must destroy the target or make it take one structure damage, otherwise you only deal the reliable two damage, even on hit. Still, really good if you have a good chance of finishing someone off. In the second section, aside from Lich itself, you get rewrite and unhinge chrono flow. Rewrite. I have never been here. I do not know where here is. Upon activation as a quick tech, choose a character within your sensor range and line of sight. All conditions on that character aside from stunned immediately end and transfer to you, these conditions end at the end of your next turn. If your ally ever suffers an emergency, this is useful, but you're gonna suffer for it. Unhinge Chrono Flow. If we always jumps from time to time, it will break it all, it will break it all. It's a quick tech upgrade that gives you two additional actions. First, haste, choose a character within your sensor range and line of sight. That character can now make a boost action as a free action for once per round on their turn for the rest of the scene as long as they don't take damage. Second, slow, choose a character in the same way. That character must pass a system save or take two heat, become slowed, and unable to make any reaction. This effect ends if they take any damage, or by spending a quick action on repeating the system save. In the final section, you get Stay of Execution, and Didymos Class NHP. Stay of Execution. Upon spending a limited charge from the system as a quick tech, choose your mech, or other character within your sensor range and line of sight. That character is now frozen in time, immune to all damage, conditions, and all other effects not caused by itself until the end of its next turn. At the end of its next turn, it is stunned until the end of the following turn, nothing can prevent the stun condition. Also, any effects that were active prior to being frozen in time are effectively paused too, and only continue when that character unfreezes. For example, a condition like impaired that would last until the end of their next turn, now ends at the end of their following turn instead. Same goes for reactor meltdown countdown and other duration based things. An unwilling character can pass a system save to avoid the effect. This system has two uses, save your ally from impending doom, or freeze an enemy so you don't have to deal with them for a while. Whatever you use it for, make it counts. And finally, Didymos class NHP. We have taken the entity into custody. We do not recommend giving this one a long leash. Your mech gains AI property, and a limited quick tech action called, Time Split. This is gonna be so fucking confusing, anyway, to use Time Split, pick your mech, or other character within your sensor range and line of sight. That character is now split into two chronological possibilities, if those words make no sense to you, just think of it as three card Monty, no matter which you pick, you will be wrong. After the chosen character has been split in half, two holes in reality that have the same size as the original character will emerge on their spot, or as close as possible. Both of these things will also have the following stat, immune to any conditions, can be used as obstruction or hard cover, and they can do three things, move, boost, and vanish without a trace like your money during a steam sale as a reaction to the end of anyone's turn. When these things overheat or lose all their health, they disappear, and the one that remain will turn back into the original character. If both of these things disappear at the same time for whatever reasons, the original player can choose which one disappears first to bring back their character. Also, as I have mentioned, the thing can just vanish as a reaction to the end of anyone's turn. Now, you are probably thinking, what can you actually use the system for? Well, first and foremost, don't use it on enemies. This is not even going to take them out for a round because they can turn back to normal in the very next turn. And if your GM is devious, this will backfire on you completely because the true purpose of time split is tactical maneuver. Use this on your ally, 
and they can move towards two advantageous spots simultaneously. And if one of their things gets focused down, they pop back in on the other one unharmed. Or just charge straight towards your enemy, so what if one gets gunned down, by the time you pop back in, they are already in your range. Hell, your ally could be in danger, so you can use this on them to essentially give them extra health or heat. The possibilities of what you can do with this NHP is damn near endless. As a conclusion, Lich is an immortal hacker unit that can take a beating in a different way than most would. Its license is paired with plenty of tech action upgrades that can manipulate time in every way imaginable and impossible, unlocking tons of tactical options that used to be locked to you before. When you find a Lich, you didn't choose it, it came to you. So if it ever makes trouble for you, suplex the fucker. And with the end of this episode, comes the end of Trash Talk on Lancer once more. Yes yes you will get your turn in the future, but for now, I would like to hear if anyone has any suggestion on what other Lancer series I could make in a close future, who knows, maybe it just might be what I needed. Anyway, I will see you all next time.